We feel that the so-called Alcatraz Island is more than suitable for an Indian reservation, as determined by the white man's own standards. By this we mean that this place resembles most Indian reservations. It is isolated from modern facilities and without adequate means of transportation. When Richard jumped in the water, he lit the spark of the Red Power Movement. It was just all the young warriors that got tired of seeing the condition on the reservation and the mistreatment for a long time. It was just a hard place to be native. The colonization started, they messed up generations and generations of people. But back then, nobody knew. All that history had been erased. Kids were being taken away from their parents and put in boarding schools. They start that termination policies, and that's when they started taking people off the, off the reservations and put a lot of people into the cities. I think that those issues are what made everybody, you know, get up there and stand up for, you know, for decency and for the right to, to be a, a human being. Do you think you have the legal right to claim the island, and why? Well, you're talking about two different societies now. In my society, or in the Indian society, yes, we do. Richard was a visionary. He was seeing beyond just now. I believed in him. He was strong. But as his leader, he's right up there with, with all of the best of them. Some of the, the great black leaders in the civil rights movement. Alcatraz was a civil rights movement. Like all those great people, he was murdered also. Like most homicides, they don't start there at the scene. They were from two different cultures, two different worlds, and uh, neither understood the other. Only one person knows what really happened there, and that was Mike Morgan. He thought he was going to just be released and nothing happened. You kids can't shoot somebody and not face consequences. There's got to be a hearing. Richard had no weapons on him at all. Nothing. When I got here, I observed Richard's body laying in the road. I went over across that bank over there because there was an exit wound on him and I found that a bullet. The bullet from the gun I found right over there, laying on the bank. To me, he had him in premeditation that he had a gun and he was gonna use it. And he did. Morgan was there, I think he was in a more wrongful way than Richard Oakes. He went there with a gun. He had the advantage, because there was no question who, who shot him. It was not a who done it. It was a why. And whether it was justifiable man, manslaughter, involuntary, or voluntary. And that was the, the crux of the case. My concern was picking a jury. I said, there's a white, all white jury here. I didn't think that was fair. I think that was one of the first large cases that I'd lost. What is right and what is just are two different things. What is right uh, can't always be proved in a court of law. And that's the problem with law. Justice prevailed. Whether justice was in the right at this time, I don't know. Annie was definitely a victim of this crime. She knew what was right and wrong. 
Yeah, look at just looking at these photos, it's kind of, it's like probably one of the saddest days of my life right there. Back then, there was no way they would convict a white man for killing an Indian. I'm the only one left that dug the grave. I don't know, it's just uh, something that still affects me. And he lost a, a really good partner. And the kids lost a really good father. My mom never talked about him. As a kid, she told us to never get involved in the movement. She goes, I want you guys, you kids, alive with me. I did teach my son more about my father than my mother did. My father was educating and smart and courageous. He was more than people can handle. And they shot him down for that. I think it's about time this government starts recognizing that we uh, young people like to take over our own destiny. I'd heard a lot of stories of how great of a leader he was and how charismatic and inspiring his presence was to other Indian people during the time. I think racism played a big part in the entire situation and the entire ordeal. They don't want unity between people. Well, not true unity. And I think that's the message that was sent when they killed my grandfather. So. I feel pretty emotional most of the time when I go out there. It's just uh, one of those things that tugs at your heart. I lost a friend, but I gained a family. That's why it's really important for me and his family to keep that legacy alive. And Alcatraz and the sunrise ceremonies is that every year. My grandfather said that Alcatraz was not an island, it's an idea. And I think what that truly means is tribes have the right to their own sovereignty and the right to establish ourselves as a true nation and showcase our culture and our passion for the movement that we all believe in. Some would say today's a good day to be Indian, good day to be an indigenous creature or whatever you want to call it. But I'd also say every day is a good day to do that. It's every day.